hosting a memorial service for Winnie Madikazela Mandela on the podium at the moment. You can see the mayor of Cape Town, Patricia DeLille, and we'll listen in. Winnie Madikizela, I greet you in the name of her undying spirit. And I want to thank the EFF for inviting me to pay tribute to our mother. Thank you very much. We all know Mama Winnie. She always spoke truth to power. And Mama Winnie's truth did not change. She spoke, spoke truth to power to the previous regime, and she spoke truth to power to the current regime. Because the truth never changed. That is how we know Mama Winnie. Fearless. We know that she only feared her God. And that's why that last Sunday before she left us, she spent all of those hours in church. But I want to start by speaking about all of those critics who are now criticizing our mother. And I want to say to them, they are the same critics who didn't say anything during the struggle against apartheid. Today you can't find anyone that supported apartheid. And who are they to criticize our mother? One day, comrade Juju, like I like to call him, we must go and fetch that voters' roll and we will see how they voted for apartheid in droves. You know what I learned from Mama Winnie? That politics is not for sissies. Politics is not for sissies. That when you are in politics, there's no rules for men, or there's no rules for women, there's just the rules, and she played by the rules, and she played the game better than most of them. She wasn't the kind of politician that when you hit her on the one cheek, she gives the other cheek, she clapped you back. She wasn't that kind of politician. But what do we have today? Today you have a lot of plastic politicians who are there for their stomach, who are not there for the people of our country. Remember Mama Winnie, that she remained principled. She always stayed with the principles. But when nobody could beat Mama Winnie, she remained firm with the principles, but flexible with tactic and strategy. That's where Mama B Winnie beat the apartheid regime time and time again, because she understood what is tactics and strategy. And so there's a lot that we could learn from Mama. Mama also believed that the problems of our people knows no political affiliation. When you don't have a home, when you are landless, when you are poor, it doesn't ask you which political party you belong to. And she was there for every one of the poor people. I used to work together with Mama Winnie in the informal settlements as ANC and PAC because she taught me that the problems of our people knows no political affiliation. That's the Mama Winnie that we must remember. There are many memories that I want to share with you. But let me tell you one memory, and I can say it today because it's safe to say so. I used to sit with Mama Winnie in Parliament and we used to work out questions that I will ask in Parliament. <laughs> and 
then one of the questions that I asked in Parliament led to my suspension out of Parliament. For 15 days they suspended me. Of course the court overruled them. So Comet Malema, I was the first one to be chucked out of Parliament without a hearing. But Mama was so clever. Mama said to me, now you go in there, my sister, and you don't accuse them. Just ask the question. Can you confirm or deny that you were spies during the apartheid years? And Mama gave me those names, and I rumbled off the names, and of course I got suspended. Mama, I will always remember that moment and all the many other questions that we shared together. In 2000 in Durban, when we had a government led by then President Thabo Mbeki, who believed that HIV AIDS did not exist, we marched together in Durban with Mama Winnie to demand ARVs for our people. I said to Tabu Mbeki in Parliament, you say ARVs is toxic. Why is it not toxic for some of the members of Parliament that are sitting here that's using ARVs, but it's toxic for the poor? So lastly, comrades, you know what? I've lost a dear friend. The last time she phoned me was in December. And she says, hi, man. You know that giggle and that husky voice? She said, what are those boys doing to you, man? Those boys don't know who they are dealing with. And then she laughed and laughed and laughed. And I assured her, I said, Mommy Winnie, I've got it under control. But thank you for your support. Last night, I played my favorite song, but I thought it is also a favorite song for Mama Winnie, because she was not only the mother of the nation, she was the flower of the nation. Listen to Jonas Guangwa. That Winnie was the flower of the nation, our flower of the nation and our mother of the nation. So as I say thank you to all of you, let me tell you one more thing before I forget. In 1995, we were in Beijing at a women's conference. We were all there as members of parliament. That time Mama Winnie was separated from Tata. You know how badly they treated Mama Winnie. When she arrived in Beijing, they did not even go fetch her at the airport. When she arrived at the hotel, she didn't ever have, have a room. I gave my room to her, and I moved in in a room with Batlamini Tlamini and Lulu Tingwana. And the next day, the next day I left the conference. How can you be at a women's conference and that is how we treat another woman? For me, it was a matter of principle. But my second complaint was I can no longer be part of the South African delegation because the South African delegation is led by a woman that's married to a polygamist. And then I left Beijing. <laughs> Mama Winnie, we will always be you remember. So I want to say Hambakatli, my sister. Hambakatli, our mother. Hambakatli, our mother of the nation. Hambakatli, a flower of the nation. You know, she was so tough, but she cried with us. She was very, very soft. And then within a second, she can turn into that anger. Because I think our problem today, we are not angry enough so that we can deal with all of the challenges that we face in our beautiful country.
What I want to say about Mama Winnie, Mama, yes, you might have made mistakes, but let us tell South Africa, you might have made mistakes, but being wrong was not one of them, because you knew and you understood the struggles of our people. And that is how we will remember you. Now, I'm worried when she arrived there at the pearly gates, she's going to start most probably a branch of the ANC, or she's going to start a branch of the EFF, maybe. <laughs> but we know that a soul rest in peace. She has given everything. She's given her life. Her family became the casualty in the struggle for freedom. And we must never, never, ever forget what Mama Winnie did for us and how she sacrificed. Humble Gasly, my friend, and may your soul rest in peace.